Hi, I'm Dr. Chalian. Uh, I'm a cardiothoracic radiologist at the University of Utah, and I'm going to talk about the posterior mediastinum. Posterior mediastinum is a potential space uh, uh, with the boundaries that you can see, and it communicates with the retropharyngeal space uh, via the supermediastinum and communicates with the intraabdominal cavity via the um, um, diaphragmatic uh, hiatus. There are different contents within the posterior mediastinum. Um, uh, we have the descending thoracic aorta, uh, we have azygous, uh, some nervous structures, we have the azygous ophigial, uh, venous system, and uh, we also have the thoracic duct and cisterna uh, carry within the uh, posterior mediastinum. Let's look at some cases. I don't expect a definite and definitive answer, but uh, try to make some differentials for these cases. Case number one, what do you see here and what is the best differential for this? Perfect. Case number two, do you see any abnormality in the media sign? Nice. Case number three, what is this structure? Case number four, what are the differentials for these uh, small soft tissues adjacent to the aorta? Perfect. We're going to uh, come back to these cases um, uh, in the subsequent uh, 10 uh, posterior mediastinal lesions that we're going to review uh, together. The first case, uh, PA uh, chest X-ray shows a huge mass over the mediastinum. Lateral view helps uh, localizing this mass that shows that the mass is uh, pushing the esophagus and um, trachea anteriorly, which uh, makes it a good location for posterior mediastinum. One of the structures in the posterior mediastinum uh, is aorta, and this is a huge descending thoracic aneurysm with a large interaneurysmal uh, thrombosis. When you see uh, an aortic aneurysm, make sure that um, there is no impending rupture uh, sign. Um, oh, the size is important, the presence of peripheral uh, strandings, or if you have any prior imaging, if the uh, intraaneurysmal thrombosis is significant, it decreases. This is also another impending rupture uh, sign. In case number two, PHS X-ray. You can appreciate that the mediastinum is wide, lateral view, there is pleural fusion, there is some atelectasis, and also a mass-like opacity over the uh, posterior uh, mediastinum. This is actually the uh, quiz case that um, I showed you. Um, you can see uh, that there is soft tissue, which is kind of wrapping over the uh, vertebral body surrounding the aorta, but is not invading any structures. In fact, the uh, vertebral arteries, um, intercostal arteries are um, going through this mass, so, which makes it uh, kind of like soft mass with no invasion. Um, PET-CT shows high FTG activity. You can also see a FD, FTG activity on uh, MIPS and sagittal uh, views. So with these, uh, this is a good uh, case of mediastinal lymphoma, which is more common in the anterior mediastinum. But uh, considering that this mass is conforming to this space and not invading structures and just pushing them with high FTG activity uh, makes a mediastinal lymphoma a good 
uh, diagnosis for this case. Uh, another case uh, I showed you in the quiz, uh, do you see anything here on the lateral view? So on the PA, we can see uh, some bulging over the uh, mediastinum uh, that on the lateral view, we actually don't see anything correlating to that in the anterior or middle mediastinum. We also don't see anything over the posterior mediastinum, but remember that if something is in the lateral aspect of the vertebral bodies, uh, you, there is a chance that you can't see much on the lateral uh, view. Also, um, you can uh, see the acidus uh, fissure, which is intact, which means that this um, lesion is not anterior uh, to the vertebral uh, bodies. Here is a T2 coronal signal that shows that this mass is to the lateral aspect of the vertebral body and has a high signal intensity on post contrast. There is significant enhancement within the um, mass, the location, the smooth uh, contour and um, enhancement is in favor of an extramedullary hematopoiesis, which we see in patients with failure of erythropoiesis. So history is very important and helpful in making uh, diagnosis. They can be bilateral, uh, such as this case that you can see several um, soft tissue lesions and the bilateral aspect of the um, vertebral, which are significantly enhancing post contrast administration. Case number four, there is a soft tissue posterior to the aorta in the posterior mediastinum, which is significantly enhancing on post contrast. CT, also on, on uh, contrast enhanced MRI, you can see significant enhancement within the lesion. MRI T1 coronal shows the mass with um, ISO intensity to the muscles. On post contrast, you can see some nodular and um, lobular uh, enhancements within the uh, lesion that on subtraction, you can better appreciate that there are some kind of nodular and tubular enhancements within the lesion. This pattern of enhancement is good for uh, hemangioma, although hemangioma is not a, a common lesion in the uh, mediastinum, but we can see uh, it in the posterior mediastinum, it can have some fossa of calcification or fat that you can see on CT or uh, T1 uh, sequence. This is case number five. Um, what you can see here is that there are some uh, soft tissue nodularity on the lateral aspect of the aorta. You can also see that there is not much splenic tissue here, and there is some cortical irregularity of the um, adjacent rib, which makes you think that maybe there has been a trauma uh, here. You look a little bit superior, and you can see that there are some soft tissue uh, pearl nodules and uh, more soft tissue nodule is adjacent to the aorta. In the upper abdomen, we can see a little bit of the deformed uh, splenic tissue with adjacent uh, coiling material. So uh, with all these, uh, uh, we thought maybe there has been a trauma and what we are dealing with is probably some ectopic splenic tissue for which we ordered a damaged RBC scan. And interesting enough, you can see uh, all these foci of um, radionuclide object within uh, the lesions that we see in the pura uh, and um, adjacent to the aorta, which makes it a good case of splenosis. Um, uh, these cases of splenosis are more common in the um, in, in males because um, one major reason for these are uh, trauma.
uh, case number six, you can see a mass uh, over the lateral aspect of the more superior mediastinum. And on the lateral view, you can localize it in the superior mediastinum with extension to the inferior uh, mediastinum. Uh, coronal uh, CT with no contrast shows the mass, which is kind of extending to the adjacent neuro from sagittal view for localization. The axial view shows the mass again extending to the adjacent neuroforamen. T2 shows heterogeneous uh, high signal intensity uh, in the mass. T1 without contrast shows iso uh, signal uh, to the adjacent mass. T1 post contrast shows a uh, significant enhancement within the lesion with uh, some areas of more heterogeneity. Um, you can see significant enhancement of the lesion on uh, these fat suppressed uh, post contrast images. This uh, configuration extension to the neuroforamina enhancement and T2 signal intensity um, uh, makes this a good case of nerve sheet tumor, which can be a schwannoma or neurofibroma. Uh, they can have some more specific uh, signal intensity on T2 uh, called uh, the target sign, which shows more uh, a ream of enhancement peripherally and less signal at the uh, center. When you see more heterogeneous enhancement, um, it is in favor of a neurofibroma uh, because of the internal um, fibrous tissue. In other case, lobulated mass um, adjacent to the uh, mediastinum. On the lateral view, you can localize it in the superior uh, or posterior mediastinum with extension to the superior mediastinum. T1 uh, pre-contrast shows this lobulated mass with some small areas of heterogeneity. On T2, you can see high signal intensity with, which is heterogeneous with some small foci of uh, signal void. Again, uh, T2 heterogeneous signal with uh, areas of low signal intensity. And here CT is actually helpful. It shows these kind of popcorn calcifications, which is better seen on the coronal view. And on the sagittal, you can see a little bit uh, connection to the adjacent um, rib. So all these signal voids are the foresight of calcification and makes this a good case of chondrosarcoma. Uh, with um, signal uh, characteristics, which is uh, helpful for um, characterization of chondrosarcoma. Case number eight, um, we have uh, a lot of soft tissue nodularity around the aorta on non-contrast CT, which at first you might think that this is probably adenopathy. Um, lower down, we see more soft tissue adjacent to the aorta, uh, but you can also see that there is a bit of ascites and the liver is uh, nodular. Post-contrast shows significant enhancement of these nodularities and uh, considering the uh, cirrhosis and ascites, uh, these are most likely parasophageal varices and some areas that you can even appreciate as a physical, uh, varices. Um, this one, the uh, tubular uh, pattern of enhancement and findings in the abdomen helps uh, differentiate it differentiating this case. Another case that shows a small soft tissue adjacent to the uh, descending thoracic aorta on non-contrast CT. Uh, T2 weighted imaging shows 
uh, high signal intensity correlating to that uh, lesion on T2 fat suppressed, you can see significant uh, high signal intensity. Uh, on T1, uh, there is low signal intensity associated to the lesion. Uh, post contrast, uh, just a little bit uh, contrast there. And on DWI, there is high signal intensity associated to that, which means that we are probably dealing with a lesion that has some static uh, fluid uh, within it. And on post contrast, again, you see that uh, there is a bit enhancement and the structure is uh, kind of uh, tubular. With these, uh, this is a cisterna chile, uh, which is a dilated part of the lymphatic system at the level of L1, L2 that um, uh, collects the lymphatics of the abdomen and drains uh, via the thoracic duct into the uh, confluent of the left uh, subclavian and uh, jugular. Uh, vein um, and at the level of T5 it goes to the uh, left uh, side of the um, uh, esophagus and drains to the venous uh, system. So that uh, signal characteristics of diffusion restriction and high signal intensity on T2 and low signal on T1 is good for a lymphatic uh, structure. The last case, um, you can see uh, that there is a large structure with internal gas over the mediastinum on PA view and lateral view, which is of course a case of um, hiatal uh, hernia. In CT, you can see that pretty much the whole stomach is within the hiatal uh, hernia. Uh, sagittal view, you can show the stomach in the posterior mediastinum. You can see also that there is part of the colon within uh, the hernia sac. Uh, with that, we should know that there are four types of hiatal hernia. Uh, the first, in the first one, um, uh, the G junction is uh, superiorly uh, positioned uh, compared to the um, uh, hiatus, uh, the second one, the G junction is not moved cephalot, but part of the stomach is within the posterior mediastinum. Uh, type 3 is a combination of type uh, 1 and 2. And type 4 is when we have the stomach. In addition to that, we have another uh, organ such as um, colon or pancreas, or even uh, part of the liver within the um, sac. Uh, we reviewed uh, 10 cases of posterior uh, mediastinal lesions, and I hope the information you uh, received uh, can be helpful in uh, your uh, practice. Thank you very much, and if you have any questions, please uh, reach out to me.